come here to help me because it must be a collaboration. It is an attempt, it is an experiment, and I hope, I hope that we shall succeed in giving you some introduction in Martinus cosmology in English. I have chosen to speak about a turning point, a special turning point in life. In life, we have so many turning points. We come from childhood to youth to major age, to old age, and between all these ages we have turning points. And we have a turning point every night and every morning. We have a turning point which we call death and another which we call birth. But the special turning point I'm going to speak about is the turning point in a great spiral cycle of evolution. The turning point from darkness to light. An old Sufi poet once in the past wrote I died as mineral and became a plant. I died as plant and rose to animal. I died as animal and I was man. Why should I fear? When was I less by dying? Yet once more I shall die as man to soar with angels blessed. But even from angelhood I must pass on. That is, in a poetical language, just the same as the cosmology Martinus gives us in a language which is spiritual science. Martinus explains us what is happening around us and in ourselves. When I'm going to speak about this special turning point from darkness to light, it is because we live in it. We experience us it around us and in ourselves. And then it is important to know what is going on around us in this world and what is going on in ourselves. And there Martinus gives us a world picture, explains for us the cosmic structure the cosmic structure of the universe, the living universe, and the cosmic structure in ourselves. And then I should want to have some slides. Here, we see the cathedral of our time. In the past, we know that human beings have built cathedrals for religion, cathedrals and temples. Here we see the temple and cathedral of our time. The concentration on physical matter, the concentration on science and technique. This is an absolutely necessary stage in the evolution of man. But it is a stage 
which we are going to leave. A stage where the concentration on the physical matter can give us special experiences, but it is a transitional stage. A transitional stage we will go out from with experiences of causes and effects in relation to physical matter. But many people nowadays think that such experiences isn't enough. We must have experiences about <coughs> ourselves, experiences about not only physical matter, but also mental matters. But what is mental matters? What is thoughts and feelings, memory and all that? That is what Martinus tells us in his cosmology and tells us how it is important and necessary that terrestrial man can be a cosmic chemist to mix, to be able to mix the spiritual matters in our minds in such a way that we can change the conditions on this globe from war to peace. And that is the same as leaving the darkness and going onward towards light. And here we see a drawing by an American artist. His vision as the leader of an office once in the future. Well, in one sense, we can look at it and laugh, but in another sense, it is very serious too. We don't want to be robots. Absolutely not. But at the other side, we know that uh, it's very important to have machines, to have computers, and so on. They can help us. But what about man himself? We are not computers, are we? Well, many human beings in our time believe that they are their physical body. They identify themselves with their physical body and think that they began life with birth and that Death is the end of life. That they are physical beings and no more. Well, then we are like machines, like robots. But more and more, one human being and another have got experiences which lead them to think that this is not enough for them. They understand there must be a meaning with their life as human beings. And they want to be able to understand such a meaning. They search for it. And people who search are going to find in this world, we have religions, but many people in our time cannot be inspired by religious dogmas. They want to understand. They want to know why. Why we are just as we are. Why there are wars in this world, even if we are longing for peace. And what every of us should be able to do in order to change the conditions from war to peace.
Is it possible for a human being to be able to change the conditions in this world? Yes. Every one of us is able to change the conditions in this world. And we are not only able to do so, it is absolutely necessary, little by little, that more and more people concentrate on that, to change the conditions in this world from war to peace. But many people say, well, we can't change the world. The war in Vietnam and in many other places, world wars. What can a single man do? Where does war begin? Some people say, well, the Germans begin war. The English begin war. The Americans starting war. No. Wars begin in ourselves, in the human being. And why? Because we are in a transitional state from animal kingdom to real human. That is that this special turning point, and at the same time, it is the turning point from darkness to light, from war to peace. Here we see a picture of terrestrial man today. We see a scientist looking at the stars and the text here in Danish is in English that the brain of the human being, the microcosmos in the brain of the human being is looking at the macrocosmos, the stars. Here we see the rescue man between macrocosmos and microcosmos. This evening, Martinus is going to give a lecture about empty space and particles. And about this, that this empty space isn't empty. Because there are rays, wavelengths, and that is just the same as thought energy, thinking energy. We live, all of us, on this earth, in a state between macrocosmos, and that is empty space and particles in macrocosmos, and microcosmos. Of course, not only our brain, but our whole physical body and the nature around us is microcosmos, cells, atoms, and so on. Empty space and particles. Circulation in macrocosmos and circulation in microcosmos. And our daily life is based on all that. We couldn't have any experience. We couldn't experience our physical life here without macrocosmos around us and without microcosmos in ourselves and the physical matter around us consisting of cells, atoms and so on. But is it the brain, the microcosmos in the brain, which is looking at macrocosmos? Well, this scientist will not say, my brain is looking at the stars. 
He will say, I am looking at this target. He has such a feeling, which we call I. A feeling of a center. I am. All of us can say that. I am. What is this I am? This feeling of center. We can't say it is here, and we can't say it is here. Where is it? And what is it? We have circulations in macrocosmos and circulations in microcosmos. Movements in matter. Movements in space. Movements in time. And movement in our consciousness. But in contrast to all these movements, we have that feeling I am. I was a child. I came into youth. I am just now in my major age. And perhaps I shall come into my old age. I was, I am, perhaps I shall be. Behind all these movements in the past and just now and in the future, I am. That is the fixed point. That is the contrast to all movements. And the contrast, the principle of contrast, is very important. The principle of contrast, yes, there are many principles, many laws in the universe. But terrestrial man doesn't know so much of all those principles and laws. We have some experiences about physical matter and cause and effect in physical matter. But cause and effect in spiritual matters concerning ourselves, life and death, well, their terrestrial man doesn't know so much. And there Martinus tries to give terrestrial man a help so that we can be able to help ourselves to understand and based on that understanding to change life. Modern man has technique and science and wars. England expects every man to do his duty. And of course, not only England, also Germany and Denmark and Sweden and all other countries. And what is this duty? Here. And what it leads to, we can see that war and death, darkness. War, of course, is not only world wars and wars between nations and countries. There are many other wars in this world, in daily life, between man and man, between man and woman, between woman and woman. Many variations of wars. How can we come out of war? Only if we know what war is 
and what peace is, and what we are ourselves. And that is what Martinus is going to tell us. Here, we see Martinus' main symbol. And here we see the mineral kingdom. Long, long ago, we died as minerals, and we became plants. Here we see the vegetable kingdom. And from plants, we rose to animals. Here we see animal kingdom. And then, the Sufi poet wrote that he became a man. But can we say that we have became men, real human beings? No. According to Martinus cosmology, we are on our way to be real human beings. We live here in a transitional, transitional state between animal kingdom and the real human kingdom. The old Egypts made a very good symbol of that transitional state, the Sphinx. Half animal and half human being. We are Sphinxes, all others. On our way to be real human beings, Star, we see here, is Martino's symbol of what he calls cosmic consciousness. If we think of our religion and there especially concentrate on Christ, well, it is just the same as Christ's consciousness. But just now, Another form of consciousness is dominating on this globe. That is not Christ consciousness. That is devil consciousness. Devil consciousness, that is the intellectualized jungle. And the intellectualized jungle is our world just now. And that is just the same as devil consciousness. Devil consciousness is not in the animal kingdom. It is here. Where there is such images from the jungle in our mind and in our body but where, at the same time, the beginning of humanity is, the beginning of real humanity. This is the turning point from darkness to light. And this turning point from darkness to light goes on this experience goes on in this way, that darkness from being something we create through our feelings, through our thoughts, through our actions, can be a knowledge of darkness, an experience of the effects of darkness cause of a special law in the universe, the law of karma, cause and effect not only in physical matters, but also in mental, in psychical matters, in our mind. We sow and reap, and not only in one life, because we have not begun life through our birth and childhood. We live 
between circuits, between circulations in microcosmos and macrocosmos. But, of course, we who live in a world Martinus has given the name medium cosmos, we have our circulations too. As the living beings in microcosmos and the living beings in macrocosmos. When the physical science speaks of circulations, Martinus speaks about the circulations of living beings. Living beings in macrocosmos, the globe, the earth as a living being, the sun system as a living being, the Milky Way as a living being, and cells and atoms, and so on, down in microcosmos as living beings. And all these living beings live and move and have their being in the living universe, the Godhead. And that is what Martinus has symbolized here. The Godhead and God's creating creative power radiating through all worlds, through mineral kingdoms, vegetable kingdom, animal kingdom, and the transitional state where we are just now, but also the real human kingdom, the kingdom of wisdom, the divine kingdom. All these states, which are physical states here, and for a time here, a time to come, but then more and more spiritualized and here living beings who live and move and have their being in spiritual worlds. And we are on our way to such a condition, to be a real human being and to be a being, a man in God's image. And that is a creator in the universe. All that we know today are creating, practical creating, creating into fine arts and in technique and many other ways that beginnings, we are going to be divine creators in the image of God. But this turning point from darkness to light, we must through. And how can we come through this turning point? Yes in ourselves, in working with ourselves in daily life. The cosmic perspective Martinus gives us has only, is only important if we really try to use it in daily life as the base for our daily life. The evolution from mineral to man and to higher spiritual beings is an evolution which gives us perspectives which are actual now, just now. Because any of us in our daily life can do many things in changing this world from being a world of wars to be a world of peace. And the next symbol 
we see almost the same as at the main symbol of Martinus. But here, Martinus has concentrated especially about the relation between darkness and light. I think that most of you know the old simple, the old Chinese simple Yang and Jin, where we also see darkness develop to a culmination and light develop to a culmination. But in the culmination of darkness, we see a little point of light. And in the culmination of light, we see a little point of darkness. This symbol by Martinus is, yes, we can say it is like an X-ray picture of John and Jim. We know that in an X-ray picture of our body, for instance, we can see the organs and many other things. And so it is in this X-ray box, in this X-ray uh, picture of the cosmical structure, the cosmic structure. We see the organs in the cosmic structure, and we see the culmination of light, the darkness in there. We see the culmination of darkness, but light is there. And now, we are here, at this transitional state, between the real animal kingdom and the real, the kingdom of real humanity. But what are we going to do? What can we do ourselves? We can work with ourselves. And that is work with the energies in our mind. The energies in our mind. What is that? The energies in our mind, Martinus shows at the next symbol, where he shows the living being as a trinity, a triune living being, a creator, with his creative power. And the result of it, the created world, the created things. The white triangle symbolizes the eye, the creator, the fixed point, the quiet, the stillness, the silence in everybody of us. The contrast to all movement. And that is Eternity. Eternity is in such a long, long time. Eternity is the fixed point. And through this fixed point, every one of us, even if we know it in our day, date, consciousness or not, we are one with the Godhead. And therefore we can never die. We are eternal beings. What we see here, Martinus calls the creative power. And the creative power is just as eternal as the I. If there was a time where there was no creative power, well, then we have to create a creative power, but that can only happen through creative power. The creator and the creative power are eternal realities. And that's not something we have. That's something we are. That is what Martinus calls the super-consciousness of the living being. And here we have what might be called the sub-consciousness of the living being. 
But the subconsciousness of a living being is just as necessary as the superconsciousness. But in this state of life, the created things, the created world, there is movement, there is change, and there is there are experiences. In this world, without time and space, the world of the eternal laws, the eternal principles, there are no experiences. The creative power is a world where the energies of the universe are kept and organized but the creating and the experiences are in this world, or these worlds. The worlds of eternal energy, that's also an eternal world, but a world of eternal change. And there we have the innermost example of the principle of contrast. The eye, the quietness, the stillness, and here, movements in time, in space, in matter, and in consciousness. Matthew speaks about the mother energy, which is the creative, just the same as the creative power. And this mother energy has the radiations in six variations. Six variations of energy. The main energies in the universe and the main energies of the living being. The energy of instinct, the energy of explosion, the energy of healing, the energy of intelligence, the energy of intuition, and the energy of memory. And we see all these energies of which we can create bodies, instinct, bodies of instinct, and bodies of explosion, which is the same as such the body we have got here. And energy is a feeling of intelligence, of intuition and of memory. Here we see such an explosion of body, a physical body symbolized. But then I would like to end my lecture in showing you a drawing I have made with which I go on in my lecture.
But in this world, we have no day consciousness. But every night, when we sleep, we are tired. Why are we tired? Because it is not our consciousness which is tired. It is because we have used our physical body and the nerve system so much during the day and then we are tired. And then we need to rest our physical body. And when we sleep, it is that we go out of the physical body and then we have our experiences in our night consciousness. When, once in the future, we are going to die, well, then our whole consciousness is drawn out of our physical body, and then we are going to have day consciousness in the spiritual world, and then our consciousness is born by the energy, by the corpse, of the body of feeling, the body of intelligence, the body of intuition, the body of memory. But that I'm going to tell you in my Well, then, if you want to ask any questions, I shall try as good as possible to to answer your questions. And uh, I took the drawing with me because uh, perhaps uh, some of you would uh, want to ask questions about the drawing. And uh, if there are not too many questions, well then I could do so that I could go a little further with the drawing now and the explanation of the drawing. And uh, then we could... Um, on Friday, perhaps have a little more time to look at some more of Martino's symbols, which I wouldn't have time to explain if uh, I should use uh, more time, much more time to explain this one. So, at first I want you to ask me questions if you have got any questions in relation to my lecture My questions are probably ones that could easily wait until later, and you might be answering in any case, either today or, or later on. I don't know how important they, they will be, how you will consider them. But uh, one thing I wondered about this morning, am I right in thinking that the central star has six points and the small one has five points? Oh, yes. Is there any significance in that? Oh, yes. Uh, but perhaps um, I should wait to, to answer this question until, until um, Wednesday, when, uh, when I again will show the main symbol. Yes. Um, it is so that um, the star which uh, symbolizes cosmic consciousness uh, um, has five points, and uh, then you thought of the big, the big star with six points, symbolize, uh, symbolizing uh, God's consciousness. And well, I can say so much that um, when the star symbolizing cosmic consciousness has only five points, it is uh, because one of the main energies is latent, also in cosmic consciousness. Um, but, uh, of course, in God's consciousness, all main energies are, in its full expanse, there is that difference between the living being in which we live and move and have our being 
and all the God's sons, the living entities, that we have some time in a spiral cycle where we go towards darkness and can have an experience of culminating darkness. There we have our being in what Martinus calls God's secondary consciousness, where the renewal takes place. The renewal of God's consciousness and the renewal of the living being's consciousness. But God at the same time always has his preliminary consciousness and when we are in the kingdom of real humanity, in the kingdom of wisdom, in higher spiritual kingdoms, then we are, when we live and move and have our being, in God's preliminary consciousness. So, God, the Godhead, is always, is always uh, culminating in light because the living being is circulating in God's mind. But we have some time in darkness and some time in darkness. But that I'll, I'll go on in further lectures so that I can say so much today and uh, then I, I should try to, to answer the question perhaps Wednesday or Friday. Any other questions? In seventy five is it you have there? Was it instinct and feeling and memory? Of instinct? Yes. Explosion, feeling, intelligence, intuition, memory, and the seventh is the mother energy, in which they are all rooted. Yes. Do any of these coordinate or allow or sort of creative imagination in night consciousness? Night consciousness? Night consciousness is here, and day consciousness. Night consciousness, um, when we in, in the night has left our physical body and our night consciousness is, is bearing our mind, we have a circulation in the spiritual worlds. It is so that um, if we have which we sleep uh, and rest in the quite natural way, have a very good sleep. Then uh, it is so that when our mind is drawn out of the physical body, the night consciousness is bearing our mind. And that is that our body of feeling, our body of intelligence, body of intuition, and body of memory, one after another, is bearing our mind. And then when we wake up in the morning, we come through the instinct body and the psychical part of this body of explosion into the gravity body. It is the same principle as when we die. But when, when it is in sleep, of course, some energy is um, in contact with the physical body. If it wasn't, the physical body would die. And at the same time, it is so that when we wake up in the morning, fresh and, uh, and ready to take up a new work, work, and so it is because that the um, nerve system has been built up again. When we are tired, it is uh, because of... Where is the tension? It's, it's worn. Uh, yes, it's worn out. Yes, worn out. Um, uh, through the day, we have worn out the, our nerve system. But um, when we rest, 
energy from our super consciousness is coming through to the to the gravity body. And when we wake up, then we are ready to to have a new day's work. When we die, it is so that all our energy is taken out of the physical body. And then we have our dead consciousness in these worlds. And then it is so that we have a vacation in the spiritual worlds. Then the psychical part of this energy, the energy of explosion, it is an electric body. And we have got it within the gravity body. But when we die, this psychical part of the explosion body is drawn out of the gravity body and the gravity body is becoming a corpse. And then for some time, almost, always a short time, our mind is born by this psychical part of the explosion body. When, after death, we know that sometimes the person is seen by a good friend, a, rela a relative or so. It is because this psychical body has its wavelengths very near to the physical matter. And when we speak of ghosts, well, it often is so that it is spiritual beings whose mind is born by this body, whose wavelength is very near the physical world. But it is almost it is uh, almost always it is so when we is concentrated when we die uh, we have no darkness in our mind no bad con uh, conscious then we it is soon so that our mind is formed by the, the the energy and the body of feeling for some time and then for some time by the body of intelligence, the body of intuition, and the body of memory. The time between, the interval between two physical incarnations, our mind is born by these mental bodies. And then, in when uh, the, our mind is born by the body of memory, we live in the body of memory from the globe, from the earth. That's just the same thing as when we hear in our physical body ourselves, in the physical body of the globe, the physical body of the earth. Well, when we leave the physical world, we don't leave the earth or the globe. For some time we ourselves in the body of feeling of the globe, then it is it builds the world around us. And just the same with um, the the globe's uh, body of intelligence, intuition and memory. And when we are in the body of memory of the globe. It is so that our own memory through this have much more strength than we are able because we have been through these worlds to have the last physical incarnation uh, so far away in perspective that we are able to survey it and at the same time, there, because the energy of memory 
is dominating in this body. We are able to survey not only our last physical incarnation, but two, three, four, or five incarnations. Well, it is in relation to how much we have developed, but all people there are able to have a survey of some incarnations, to see cause and effect, why they met those persons, why they had such experiences of light and such experiences of darkness and so on. They have this survey, but they have it in an absolutely way of light. It is that everything which they have experienced in their last incarnation and further incarnations, they understand why. That is that also the part of the last incarnation and further incarnations which perhaps were full of sufferings, dark experiences, when they had these experiences in the physical world. Now they understand why. They have such a survey of a cause and effect and they understand why. And that is the reason why they experience them and experience these in a quite, a quite other way. And they have been through these wonderful worlds. That is, the world which is the earth, body, of feeling, of intelligence, of intuition. And they have got very, uh, they have got so wonderful experiences there. Of course, in relation to their development in their own body of feeling, intelligence, intuition. But even if it is human beings who have not so very much evolution, so much development of uh, intellectual faculties and love and charity, at least they have some. And what they have developed here, they are able in these worlds to experience through these faculties and talents in a, in a much greater perspective. They don't develop in these spiritual worlds between two physical incarnations. As long as we are terrestrial men, we have our evolution here. But and here we learn to think in a physical world, and if it's uh, this physical world or other physical worlds, it doesn't matter. But in physical worlds, physical worlds are the only worlds where there is resistance. In the spiritual world, there are no resistance. In the spiritual world, it is so that we think, and when we think, it is around us. And then we have to incarnate here in order to learn to think. And when we have really learned to think in connection with the laws of life, then we need no more reincarnate in physical matter in such uh, um, spiral cycle. Then we belong to these worlds then we are no more only guests in these worlds between two incarnations, then we belong to these worlds, and that is that then we go out of darkness and into light, and then we are cells and organs in, uh, in God's uh, primary consciousness, that is, then we are real creators, able to use our cre uh, creative power, uh, to benefit all living beings in the universe. Any other questions? May I just ask on what you have now said? Yes. Um, this 
second state you speak of, that also has the opposite in it, or the duality, or not. In the lower, the lower we have a duality, or a re resistance was the word you used. Yes, resistance, now, yes. Now, as one moves to the next, is resistance in this next one, the next stage you speak of? Yes. Uh, no, here is no resistance. No resistance. No, no resistance. Mm -hmm. It is, here it is so that the energies uh, follow our thoughts. And therefore, here we have to learn to think. And then, to use the way of thinking here. And we are much able to use it here than we are here. But here we have to learn to think because here, if we think in a way which is against the laws of life, we meet pain, we meet sufferings, and all that, and we don't meet it here. It is so at the, in uh, life after death, well, there is a, a condition in the first period after death where, where people can experience um, what they, well, we know it from the, the Catholic system that they, they um, speak of, of um, purgatory. And um, purgatory and hell, we know these words. Of course, purgatory or hell is no place. It is a um, state of mind, and we can have it here, in our physical world. And if we have, if we have in our, in our mind, we have thoughts and feelings of jealousy and, uh, and um, agony and uh, such things, well, then we can create such a state of purgatory or hell for ourselves, in the first time after death. But uh, Martinus says so often that we shall absolutely not fear death. Because if we have already here learned the law of prayer to ask for help, and we are used to it here, then, of course, when we leave our physical body, we will ask for help, and the help will come. Because the gardening angels, who are behind us also here in the physical world, they are helpers when we leave the, the physical world. Well, that is the birth, too. When we come from the spiritual world and are born to the physical world, there are helpers. And when we leave the physical world and are born to the spiritual world, then there are helpers too. And when we concentrate on these helpers, they are going to, to help us. But we must open our mind ourselves. But then when we have come through these uh, this circumstances, circumstances which we have created ourselves, and uh, we can come through them here in this world, then it, is, it will be so that uh, death will be a wonderful sunset from this world and much more wonderful sunrise in the other world. And then it is so that in these worlds, where our mind is born by these bodies, there, is, uh, there are no sufferings and uh, anything of darkness of that kind resistance of that kind. Any more questions? There was a little thing before, uh, a purely uh, linguistic pattern. Yes. You said uh, preliminary, uh, you meant primary. Primary, yes, yes. primary. Primary uh, consciousness, yes. secondary consciousness. Primary and secondary consciousness. Thank you very much. Maybe it's a silly question, but uh, I should like to know how long are we to stay in subconsciousness? Yes, um, subconsciousness, um, well, 
super-consciousness super and sub-consciousness are necessary contrasts in experiencing life. It isn't, it isn't so that, uh, sub, that subconsciousness would cease. When we experience life in the highest spiritual worlds, it is so that we experience it through what Martinus called X3, the created worlds. And in Martinus' language, it is so that um, all this is subconsciousness. And the superconsciousness is a world without time, without space, but not, uh, not only without time and space, also without experience and creative. It is the creator and the creative power. It is the world of a world of principles and laws. But X3, the created world, is absolutely necessary. I can say it in in that way too. That this world, which is in two parts, but it's only for a short time the most primitive conditions which we represent, pre represent now uh, as anim as plants and animals and the terrestrial men. We are here, but when we have learned to think, then we are here. Of course, we are here now, even if we have an experience through a physical body, but we are spiritual beings. But when we reach to cosmic consciousness, and that is that our day consciousness is born by our body, our feeling, intelligence and so on. Well, it is subconsciousness. Because we can only experience through subconsciousness. Martinus speaks about X1, the creator, the stillness, the silence. X2, the creative power, primal desire and mother energy, and the fate element, where the energies, it's a world of organization, a world of keeping of energy. But here are the worlds of experience and the worlds of creating. These worlds are the worlds of time and space dimensions, of course, in a quite other way in the spiritual world than in the physical world. And at the same time, it is a world of experience and creating of results and effects of eternal change, beginnings and ends. And every end is a new start point. That was what I tried to explain in my lecture that this world is also an eternal world, but it is an eternal world of change. Then I have not said anything about these two figures, with the M and the F. In the superconsciousness, there are these eternal talent kernels or talent nuclei so that the living being have eternal possibilities to create new bodies of instinct, new bodies of explosion, new bodies of feeling, of intelligence, of intuition and memory. And at the same time, in the faith element, there are two other eternal talent nuclei. And these Talents nuclei is the talent nuclei or talent kernel for sending out energy and for receiving energy. And that is just the same as the male pole in the living being and the female pole in the living being. And when the living being has reached the state, the stage of cosmic consciousness, then there is a quite balanced 
difference between these poles. Now, when we are here as physical beings, it is so that we are. We represent the, we represent the male principle or the female principle as men and women. And we see it's just the same in the animal kingdom. But when we, once in the future, will reach the stage of cosmic consciousness, we shall no more be men and women. Then there will be a balance between the male pole and the female pole in our body and in our consciousness. Christ was a real human being. Well, he was born in a body, which was a man's body, because a body, the body of the real human being is not here on this earth. It cannot be created here. Now we are on the way, we have, we have it, we have got it, all of us, inside this body. And when living beings have been born here with cosmic consciousness, well, it had been necessary that they had bodies which were male or female. Here in this globe, we, most when it is, such persons as Christ and Buddha and so, we know they were in a male body, but they were real human beings. And our development, our evolution towards cosmic consciousness, at the same time means that if we are a man, then it is so that the opposite pole has its evolution here behind the brain, that is the female pole. Well, this is the man, and that is the reason why I here have drawn the female pole, not as big as the male pole. Because the male pole is dominating, and we have such a male being, a man, here. But little by little, through experiences, through Many incarnations, the female pole will develop, and when there is a balance between the male pole and the female pole, that is to say that this being then have reached a stage where it shall be possible to materialize the body. Then we have the last stages of physical conditions on this earth, and then we shall no more be born by women, then we shall have ability to create our physical bodies in the way that we can materialize them, and we are not going to die in the way we now has, have to do, but we can dematerialize our physical bodies. But that is based on an absolutely balance between the male and the female pole. I think that uh, in my lecture on Friday, I shall say much more about the relation between the male and the female pole and the fate of the living beings. Any more questions? Perhaps some of you have read um, um, parts of, of uh, what Christ has said, which is not in the Bible, which is not in the New Testament, uh, but um, among them, I know I have read in the so-called uh, Thomas, Thomas Gospel, thank you. Thomas, the Gospel of Thomas, and uh, also in other 
others um, <laughs> that Christ is asked when his kingdom will come and he answers when there is no more men and women but both together and when you shall no more be born by women that's something which shows that um, Christ has known all that of course but that is among these things of which usually he said that uh, he knew much more but he couldn't tell about it because people wouldn't understand it people at this time wouldn't understand it if you can take it but he knew that there were so many things which they at his time wouldn't understand and of course many people will not understand in our time but some people will begin to understand and in the future more and more people not only will understand but it will be absolutely necessary to know what is going on when we little by little are no more male beings and female beings but more and more real human beings and that is men who are not only men but more and more concentrated our humanity loving one and one and uh, and all and you know the type the very masculine type of man well little by little it disappears and it's just the same the type of women painted by Rubens you know little by little they disappear and the bodies and also the mind will change and the human beings will be more and more concentrated really uh, that what is human and not only based on male and female any more questions yes yes in a, in a book of uh, American psychologist Mr. Stevenson is the third 20 cases of reincarnation yes 20 cases suggestive of reincarnation yes I've just got it I have not read it oh. but I've just got it among uh, these cases are referred uh, some uh, with uh, a change of sex yes from uh, one incarnation to so so the following yes uh, what uh, does uh, Martino say of that Yes, Martinus says that it's possible, especially when the opposite pole has begun to develop more and more. Then it is possible. But um, I know that Martinus there says something which is in opposition to what uh, is told in Theosophy and uh, other forms of uh, spiritual things uh, I know that they often say uh, some of them say that we can be man in one incarnation and and uh, woman in the following incarnation uh, Martinus says that when we have reached a certain a certain stage where the opposite pole is Develop, has begun to develop more then it is possible as a derailment to incarnate so that we also hear in the gravity body represent the opposite sex but uh, Martinus says that it is derailments and then in a spiral circle from animal kingdom and through our stage as terrestrial men and to the stage of cosmic consciousness or real humanity the 
quite natural development or evolution is that the living beings who in the kingdom, the animal kingdom, the real animal kingdom, have been male beings, they are men, and the, the opposite pole, they are men as terrestrial beings, and the opposite pole will develop more and more in the fate element. And that is that there will be more and more human men. And the opposite is, we can think this pole greater and this pole not as great. And then we should see a, a woman here. And little by little the male pole will develop more and more. But as there is derailment in many ways just in the turning point from darkness to, to light, there are also derailment based on the relation between the male and the female pole. And Martinus says, among other things, that if a human being Perhaps in some incarnations, I would have taken men, in some incarnation in some incarnations where it absolutely is not natural for him, is a monk. Lives in a monastery and uh, it is so that his normal sexual power, which of course normal must have its up leg through his his male pole and that is his sexual organs. If um, he there, perhaps in some incarnations, have such a stage where it is it is um well, it's very hot. Hindered, yes, hindered, yes. Um, well, then of course, little by little, it is so that this, this power, and it is so that the sexual power is, well, the same what they, in the Orient, call the Kundalini power. Uh, Martinus says, calls it the highest high. And it has a special evolution in animal kingdom and in terrestrial man. But when we develop as human beings, it is so that this power begins to develop in the opposite pole as creative power, as real charity, real love, and intellectual creative power. But if we think of a man or a woman who in perhaps in some incarnations have not had possibilities to let this power not in a natural way come through the sexual organ, then it will be so perhaps in following incarnations that it breaks through in such an enormous way so that such a, such a living being can have a sexual life which is over, over dimensioned perhaps in some incarnations and that is based on the principle of hunger and saturation that then such a human being through some incarnations can get the natural can get satisfied too early so that the opposite pole hasn't yet developed so much that it is able through human feelings 
and human intelligence and human intuition to bear the opposite pole. And then it can lead to sexual derailments. Many forms of sexual derailments and among these what you talked about that we can change sex from one incarnation to another. But Martinus says it is a derailment. Yes. Yes. Uh, when uh, when uh, a woman is creating, it is because of the evolution of her male pole. And when a man has more and uh, more feelings and uh, is able to to show charity and uh, well, isn't so. But more and more human, it is because of uh, of the evolution of his female pole. And the more they are balanced, the more we are human beings. Well, perhaps it was not enough for today, or have you got more questions? Thank you very much. And we'll be taking it. You can follow.